Good afternoon, Brian with Grand Roofing. We're up on a roof, or on a ladder, getting ready to go up on the roof to look at this roof that I just got a call on to look at replacing pipe flashing and tearing down a chimney and converting over to a B vent flue pipe or something. I, I don't know. I typed the address into my software and yep, I've been here a few years ago. Told them the roof was shot. It was like three layers and it needed replaced. So now that we're back, perfect opportunity to see what's going on. So the garage roof is done. The house roof has been touched, but wasn't replaced. So let's start off right here where I got the ladder and show you this gable edge here. All right, look at this. That's a thick roof. Now I've just had some people comment recently. They don't know what I'm talking about. The starter doesn't count as a row, but obviously they need to go back and pause the video. Because when you have shingles like this, this is not a starter. Here's the visible side. Here is the common bond where my thumb is underneath and there's the headlap to it. This is one layer. If you saw a starter row, you wouldn't see it jagged like this every five and a half, five and five eighths inches. So there's one layer. You can also see the color difference. There's a roof layer that's white, that's number two. Third layer is red down there. So three layers, so this is a nasty mess. Let's see what we can see on the rest of the roof here. As I stated before, they want me to fix and repair something right back here. And the garage was shot and had holes in it. Obviously, somebody did the garage roof. Somebody was up here and did something. Let's see what we can see. I just came up here a minute ago and I'm blown away. So, somebody had done some stuff here. Looking at that, it's all tarred up. Tells me that somebody doesn't know what they're doing. This style chimney here, I'm familiar with. There's a, like really no flange to it. Typically, there's a little turn up on the back, a little turn down on this, the bottom lower side. And that's about it, there's no flashing to this. And hence the copious amounts of tar. Also, looking at this here, I'm not a fan of doing anything with these because I'm not gonna do stuff I'm not technically supposed to. Can it be done? Yeah, but uh, most of these style chimneys, if you look, this one may not have it here, but down inside, you typically find these terracotta style chimneys. And if you look at them, there's a thin layer on near the inside or the outside. Also filler in the middle here. This got the vermiculite in it. And I've also seen a, an asbestos round tile here that's wrapped in this terracotta. I don't want to piss with this. I don't want to mess with it. They didn't use me, like I said in the past. They obviously used the cheaper guy to fix the mess on the garage. And they had done something here. But wait, it gets better. Let me show you this here. I'm not a fan of plastic pipe boots because they degrade like this. You're actually getting holes through them. Now, usually this is the weak link and those don't typically get a lot of water flow. Just what's hitting the pipe boot itself or the, the pipe itself running down. And if those go bad, a simple solution is shove a new one on or any new install. Just put a second over it so the, the first one covers the original, keeps the sun rays off of it so it doesn't get brittle and crack like this. Now, on the other hand, when it's low like this, that's where the water rushes the roof and goes down and in these. These are just deteriorating, falling apart, not good. Now here's the crazy part. Well, save the crazy part for last. When I was here, there was also some damage down here. It looks like, to me, somebody had pulled apart this valley and this section of the roof. And we'll get into that here in just a second, but let's look at this nice little surprise down here. Somebody left a coil down here. I don't know if they intended to do that as a gutter drain block or what but let's look at the roofing quality here look at that there's a gaping hole with no flashing it just goes down to the soffit area down there if they block the sun maybe you can see it there's nothing there but caulking so yeah a plus here all right if you guys are watching this do you see a hump right here right through that spot can you see it? I don't know if the camera's doing a good job showing it. And it comes down kind of into about this area here. I want to show you something crazy now. One, two, three layers still on this side. One, two, and three. Sorry, I couldn't see my phone. All right. So we're still on three layer, right? Well, I thought until I looked at the other side here. It appears that somebody took this section off where the chimney is put their quality and craftsmanship into it, went around the chimney and that pipe, right up onto the multiple layers. Typically you see a big drop. 
That is unless you're smart enough to add a layer of OSB to fill the distance. Check this out. Look what we got here on this side. We have one layer with OSB. And it's totally exposed here too. Yeah, quality. I'm guessing this is the original fascia board. Why not put a piece of drip edge over this so it comes down? I just, it blows me away. So when you're dealing with estimates and you typically choose the cheapest one, that person's usually gonna go to the bank smiling, laughing, that they made a nice profit margin because they didn't use the materials they were supposed to. They probably didn't do everything they were supposed to. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they say, we're gonna tear half the roof off, put some decking down, tie it into the other multiple layers of nastiness and call it a day. Either way. <sighs> oh. <laughs> I thought I've seen it all. And then I see something new that blows me away. Somebody commented on the channel, I need to change the slogan to, I thought I've seen it all, or when you see it all, I can't remember, but anyway, look at this. I mean, let's just look at this again and admire. I can't see my screen, hopefully it's in view. Totally exposed OSB. You don't want wood exposed, but really, if you're going to, OSB is the last thing you'd want exposed to the elements. So my guess is they tore this section down, just past this area. You can see that raised hump here coming down. I don't know if they even really got into the valley. Probably, probably not. Let's see if we can see something here because I did see this. A little piece of ice and water that stuck out. What we got going on? Not even a nail in it. Missing a nail on this left shingle here too. Not really stuck down. These shingles look like they've been aged a little bit. And like I said, it's been a few years since I quoted this. I told them the roof was in bad shape. Multiple layers needs to be redone. Yeah, there's a nail on a keyway there. It's just screaming a mess. Tar will crack over time. You can see that crack developing right there. So it'll buy you some time. It's, it's probably okay, like in an absolute emergency. Like you got a problem with your roof and the rain is coming in. Yeah, go up there and tarp it off or smear a bucket of tar on it, but this is not flashing. It's not intended to be. And if you got a contractor saying that that's how you flash a chimney when they're missing the obvious bigger problem. I mean, okay. So I said there's not much flashing with this. What can you do? Well, when you take these loose, because of, I'm familiar with them, like I said, there's no three-piece, four-piece flashing kit. Like you typically see a U-shaped flashing on the bottom and it's crimped up. You see a top that crimps up and they overlap each other in the direction the water's gonna flow. And then your actual chimney sits down over the top of that. When you take these loose, instead of screwing or nailing through those little flanges they've got on the high and low side, bend a piece of flashing up under it, coming up, pulling any high. Use something rigid, thick gauge steel, nice painted or thick gauge aluminum, something. Once that's fastened on top of a row of shingles, you're gonna tuck step flashing behind it, just like you normally would. Slice these, go behind it, extend a big piece of flashing like you did on your bottom side, come out a little bit so it's overshooting a little. And when you're all said and done, you can actually fasten with zip screws into your metal to hold this down, and it's all flashed out. Nope, tar. Bucket of tar. Little tip too, if you're gonna use tar, use a glove. Just smear it on really good, just like you're doing a little cake batter. Throw your glove away and you're good. And then you can too, smile on your way to the bank. Or you can really do it good, do it right, because why am I getting the call back to fix this when whoever did it is not? Hmm. Now I'm faced with the question of, really, what's the, the proper legitimate fix for this? I'm still going to stick with the, it's three layer roof. It all needs to come off. It needs to be started over. You wasted your money. You really should consider doing it right. And if you don't, find another cheap guy. I get tired of getting callbacks for stuff like this. And it's gonna make me sound bad, but I want the homeowner, if you're contemplating this, to see my side of this. I'm not gonna put a band-aid on a mess when it should have been done in the first place. It's obviously not fixed the problem. You still got issues going on. If I were to touch it and the leak continued to persist, I don't know exactly what else they cobbled in this mess. And I don't want callbacks coming back for something that they ultimately started being cheap with. So, moral, moral of the story. If you're looking at getting estimates, not always is the cheap one the best. It's usually gonna cost you more in the long run. I'm not saying the cheapest guy is always bad. Sometimes in different markets, the prices change a lot. And then I'm, I've been told I was the cheapest in other markets. But around here in my area, I mean, I see some crazy stuff, but this one's up there.
exposed OSB on the side. Horrible, horrible flashing job with sealer. Pipe booth that's ancient, probably older than my grandparents. And just all around, I don't want to mess with it. So let me know the thoughts, your thoughts. Let me know if you could give it a thumbs up. I'm gonna go see that over there. When I actually looked at this a few years ago, there was holes in the, the decking of the garage out there. Uh, kinda wanna go see what out. I don't know, I don't think I can jump over to it real quick. Uh, I don't know. I could probably, uh, I'm not gonna go around and set a ladder up and spend much more time here. It does look like they've got new edge metal on it. Let's see if I can see, I don't know what kind of nail. Looks, is that a sure I'm gonna try to zoom in right here. Use my optical lens. Is is that a sure nail strip? Possibly. So it could be an Owen Corning duration shingle. Let's see what else we can see. Ooh, can I see in that right there and see what we got layer count wise? It appears that it was tore off. Yeah, I can't really get down there far enough. I need to get busy. This actually, this call just came in. And I was in the area, I figured I'd stop by and look at it real quick. And then I realized that this is one I'd been at years ago. Hey, they got the ridge cap running the right way into the wind. All right, time to wrap up. I got more to do. Thumbs up, consider subscribing. Let me know what kind of content you like. Keep an eye on the 20K subscriber giveaway coming up here soon. I've been busy, haven't had a chance to get the video out there. Today is Monday, November 6th. 7th, I don't know, something like that. So until next time, be safe, and we'll see you on the next video.